In this video, I will be introducing you to the concept of permutations. So if you remember my last video, I used the example of where we have five people, A, B, C, D, and E, and five seats, seat one, two, three, four, five, so one, two, three, four, and five, and we want to find out how many possible ways are there of arranging these different people in these seats. Well, we said that in the first seat, we have five people that can possibly sit there, so there are five possibilities. For the second seat, there are four people left to sit, so there are four possibilities for each of those five. Then for each of these four, there are three people left, so there are three more possibilities. For these three, there will be two people left, so there are two more possibilities. And for the last one, there's only one person left to sit, so there is one more possibility. And this gives us, and this gives us five times four times three times two times one, which we can also write as five factorial. Now, when dealing with permutations, our question that or the questions that we'll be dealing with are slightly different. So we'll have the same startup where we have five people, A, B, C, D, and E, but in this case, we only have four or three seats. So we have seat one, seat two, and seat three. So seat one, seat two, and seat three. And we have to find out how many ways in which we can arrange these people in these, these three seats. And in the end, you'll have, for each of the combinations, three people sitting down and two people standing. In order to do this, we take a very similar approach to what we did in our last question up here. So in our first spot, we have five people who are waiting to sit. So there are five possibilities for our first spot. In our second spot, there are four people left. So there are four people left to sit. So for each of these five possibilities, there are four more possibilities. And in our third spot, there are three more people left to sit. So for each of these four possibilities, there are three more possibilities. So we get the number of different arrangements that we can have are five times four times three. So let's quickly do this calculation. This gives us 60 and above we have 120. Now you've probably already noticed that the second problem over here is essentially the same thing as the first problem but we just cut off this area of our equation. We could look at another example where let's say for the same five people A, B, C, D, and E we have only two seats now so seat one and seat two. So the possible seating arrangements are, for the first spot we have five people to sit, so there are five possibilities, and for the second spot there are four possibilities of people who can sit, giving us an over, overall answer of five times four, which is equal to 20 possible combinations. In my last video I stated that for I stated that for any n number of people in n number of seats there were n factorial number, there was n factorial number of possibilities. So as we have up here, there are five factorial possibilities for five people in five seats. We want to come up with a mathematical way of saying that if we have five people, how can we, div or how many possible arrangements are there for three different seats? Or when there are more objects than there are places or positions where we're arranging those objects. So as I mentioned earlier, when I was comparing these two, for this equation, essentially what we have is five factorial or five times four times three times two times one. And in this case, we have five times four times three. So the last part of our expression has been cut off. What we want to do now is we want to find a way where we can express an a question like this in terms of factorials. So one simple way that we can do this is, let's say in this case where we have five times four times three times two times one, if we simply divide this by two times one, then we get our answer. And that's because we can simply cross this and this off and we have our original number of possible combinations. 
And something which you may notice is that this can also be expressed as 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. So once again, this is 5 factorial over 2 factorial, where 5 is the number of open or the number of objects or people that we have, and 2 is the number of people who won't be sitting. And from this, we can derive that if we have n objects or n people, and we have, let's say, r spots available, then we can denote the number of possibilities by n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So in this case, up here, our n is equal to 5, and our r is equal to 3 because there are three spots over here. So we get 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial, which gives us an answer of 5 factorial over 2 factorial. And we can do this for the second example that I offered as well. So where there were only two seats available. In this case, n is still equal to 5, but r is now equal to, what is it equal to? It's equal to 2. So in this case, we have the number of possible combinations is n factorial over n minus r factorial. We get that this is equal to Let's make a line over here. 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 2 factorial, which gives us 5 factorial over 3 factorial. And if we evaluate this, we see that we get 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. So this part of our equation and this part of our equation cancel out, leaving us with 5 times 4, which gives us an answer of 20 possible uh, ways of arranging this. So this is what we refer to as permutation. Or So in this case, where there are only two spots, there are 20 possible permutations. And in our other case, where there were three spots, there were 60 possible permutations. And in our first example, where there were all five spots, there were 120 possible permutations or arrangements of the people. So permutations can be calculated using the equation that I just mentioned. So where we have n objects, so n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, where n is the number of objects that we have, and r is the number of spots that we have for those objects. And another way of writing this is simply n p r, where once again n is the number of objects that we have, and p is the number of places where we can place those objects. So in the case where we had five seat, or five people, A, B, C, D, and E, and three seats, seats one, two, and three, one, two, and three, we could write that as five, which is our value for N, P, three, which is our value for R. And this, once again, evaluates to five factorial divided by 5 minus 3 whole factorial. Another thing that you should note regarding permutations is that the order in which the objects are arranged matters. So for example, if we have A, B, and C sitting, we consider that to be different from having C, B, and A sitting, or having even C, A, and B sitting. So while the same three people are sitting, 
it matters what chair they are in. So you can only apply this. This is applied when order matters.